Welcome to the Prep Athletics Podcast. This is Corey Heights. Some battles. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if they got us. If they did, maybe, maybe. So you will get better as a player during that year. So it was kind of exciting. Like, oh, yes, yeah, somebody wants me. And what do you do specifically when you advocate for a family? Tell me about that. Well, I'm fortunate enough because I've worked and lived uh, at, at boarding schools and private schools for a number of years uh, that I um, know a lot of these schools just from visiting their campuses. I know, as I know you have done as well, um, you know, meeting the faculty as well as understanding uh, what their, their profile is and what types of students they work with is really important. And so when I advocate uh, for a student, it's number one, uh, communicating with the admissions office or directly with a specific sport, depending on my experience with that, that school. But most of the time it's communicating with an admissions office prior to a family visiting to give them a little bit of a baseline and profile of the student in the family. Gotcha. Okay. And that comes in handy, doesn't it? It does. It, I mean, it helps for, from the fair family standpoint, just because they get a better understanding of uh, what to expect going into a school, especially in relationship to um, specific programs, uh, specific coaches, uh, which is really valuable so that for a family to know the difference between one school in terms of their basketball program or lacrosse program is really valuable. And for me, you know, I feel like, you know, being able to communicate with a director of admissions or an associate director of admissions uh, to, to give them a better understanding of the strengths of the student I and mean, the student athlete is really the most valuable part of, of what I do. Yeah, perfect. Um, I'm going to give a quick pitch to those that don't know how, how prep athletics and myself, how we work with students. So, you know, I've got kids reaching out every day, especially now with COVID from all over the world wanting to go to prep schools. And you know, a lot of kids just don't don't pass the first the first test um, one they've got to have and we're talking brick and mortar prep schools here and you can you can listen to previous podcasts and learn a difference between a brick and mortar prep school and a basketball academy but we're talking in this conversation brick and mortar established prep schools um, so i will look at a kid's athletics see how good he is see what his size is i'll look at his academics see where he stands in that uh, reign and then the family and i have to have a conversation about how much they're willing to invest in this year which I mentioned earlier. So once we get all that figured out, once we figure out the family's goals and, and we decide to move forward in a partnership, um, then, I, you know, like I said, I try to narrow down those schools to the right fitting ones. And some of the benefits of you know, working with a prep athletics or working with Chris is that just like he said, I've visited probably over a hundred prep schools in person. I've placed kids at over 37 different prep schools. And I've been doing this for the, since 2008. Um, and then I, I, you know, my previous podcast episode is my personal story. You know, I did a post-grad year myself at a prep school before playing in a D1 program. Uh, my cousin, Brad Miller, who was interviewed a few weeks ago, he attended his senior year at a New England prep school before playing four years at Purdue and 14 years in the NBA. So my family has actually benefited from, benefited from it. You know, he said many times he would not have played in the NBA without his prep school basketball experience. I would not have played D1 for free without my prep school year. So that's kind of what I can do to bring you know, knowledge and, and, and advisory role to, to basketball families or athletic families as well. So just wanted to throw that out there as well.